the computer is still configurating, but uh, I have the slides anyhow only in German, so who of you is speaking German? None, so... <laughs> <laughs> and who of you knows or has heard the name of Shaw Gebser already? Um, um, ich strebe, ich ah. <laughs> Okay, so maybe a few words uh, for induction. He was uh, born in uh, um, Posen, which is now belonging to Poland, a German cultural philosopher, born 1905 and he died in 1973. Um, and he has made a quite interesting... Okay, maybe I get some pictures as well then. What's your password? <laughs> <laughs> um, he developed a certain model of consciousness evolution. That was his main work. And he had a quite a strong affinity to the um, Indian philosopher Sri Aurobindo. I don't know whether this word or if this name is already... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, one of, one of his main works was to have a synthesis of the East and the West. And while Aurobindo made the synthesis as an Indian from the East to the West, Jean Gebser started as a European from the West and integrated the East. So these two you can see in the complementary thing, I would say. And, um, um, one of his major works have been um, Ursprung und Gegenwart. So, um, the English title... Um, it's the Eternal Origin or something? The Origin and the Presence, exactly. Origin mm -hmm. and Presence. Um, Yeah, and I want to put a focus on Jean Gebser's notion of space and time with respect to the full dome projection space. And as well, I want to have a, a shorter excursion on the idea of film theater, because um, it's not just only a cinema, and Dan was just mentioning the camera is the viewer, so this emergence that you have actually have a co-presence of the audience and not just only people sitting in front of a television. So, the, I don't know, the cinema theater is also a well-known uh, notion in English, uh, because in German we say this Filmtheater, this was the original name for the cinema, Filmtheater. So the theater aspect, <coughs> I think, is a very important point. Um, and I make some excursions to the theory of uh, Gene Lang, Youngblood to, in his concept of expanded cinema, and Dan was mentioning this already as well. Um, yes, I was mentioning already, um, this is a picture of Jean Gebser, a Swiss cultural philosopher, and he was putting a focus on the mutation of consciousness. And in his theory, he actually explains in a cultural anthropological way how consciousness expanded, developed, unfolded from an archaic state to a mythic, to a magic, to a mental, and finally, and we are at the moment in our cultural situation at this point, to an integral. And this integral consciousness is actually quite closely linked to the notion of space and time. And I will come to this again. <coughs> um, maybe one aspect, uh, Ken Wilber, <coughs> I don't know whether this uh, name is already uh, known, he has actually uh, put a lot of his work on the foundation of, uh, of Sean Gebser um, and made it popular. And um, the first, um, I want to give a quotation when he says, um, in short, the main idea is overcoming of space and time. Overcoming of space and time. What does it mean? It means that we should consciously overcome space and time, but in no way it means that space and time should be abolished. 
but that we have to get free of both to some extent without falling back into the magic consciousness weak space timelessness so he makes a differentiation between space timelessness and space time freedom and uh, this is quite closely linked to um, the various um, levels of his consciousness theory so space timelessness would be no concept and notion of space time being in some way captured in space time as we are as bodies in the three dimensional space we have a certain point in the space time and the challenge for the uh, fourth dimensionality or the integral consciousness becoming space time free so not space time less but space time free so being on the one hand on a certain point in space time as a body but at the same time with our consciousness being free in space time at each moment so this is when he was saying i mean the major title of his main work uh, ursprung und gegenwart origin and presence mean that this we are separated from the origin only through time if we could actually um, develop to a consciousness which is space-time free we would be in a total um, presence with presence past and future so the integral consciousness is actually um, a consciousness that is capable of embracing the whole space-time and is free of time and space <coughs> um, so in this way he has of course uh, studied quite a lot um, mathematics and uh, physics especially the theory of Einstein and uh, Hermann Minkowski and their theory of four dimensionality and um, to explain um, the four dimensionality of an integral consciousness he gives an example how we can actually get the notion what this four dimensionality is about because normally we have three space dimensions height um, broad and uh, depth in some way and the fourth dimension is time so uh, events in space-time create for the fourth dimension we cannot visualize this fourth dimension since we see only in three dimension but he gives an example how we can actually um, imagine this fourth dimensionality uh, and in this example he says if we take a camera and take a, a snapshot of uh, a certain scene let's say a street for example and make snap snapshots of the scene again and again so what we do with this camera we have a three-dimensional scene putting it on a two-dimensional photo or slide so we actually decrease the three-dimensionality into a two-dimensional slide or photo and if we put these slides over each other so these uh, objects that do not move in space stay at the same time but if for example a car is going through the through the uh, through the scene or a, a bicycle is going through the, the street these movements in these pictures make the fourth dimensionality <coughs> visible so with this trick of reducing a three-dimensional reality to a two-dimensional picture we are capable by this by this cubus of dias make the fourth dimension visible this is an example he's using uh, how we can imagine the fourth dimensionality Um, I was already mentioning this is his basic uh, model and his synopsis of his consciousness theory and he's giving in his major works examples in cultural uh, evolution in architectural development of mankind in in mathematics in painting and so on he describes these uh, various aspects and says that the archaic uh, consciousness structure has the null the, um, null dimension 
a month or null dimension. The magic structure is one dimensional and has a pre perspective, is spaceless and timeless, while the mythic consciousness structure is two dimensional and has no real perspective so far. He explained this in various painting and artworks and so on. With the mental structure of consciousness evolution as a whole of uh, mankind, we arrive at the three-dimensionality and there the perspectives comes into place. Here we have now a notion of self-understanding of being in space and time as an abstract space and time. And the integral consciousness structure and the integral consciousness evolution would be four-dimensional, or as he calls it, a perspective. So we have not a certain perspective on phenomena, but see the thing, whatever it might be, from all perspectives, and in this way, uh, a perspective. And this would be uh, the freedom of space and time. Um, well, a few words to the visual um, experience space in the Full Dome Theater. Um, he's mentioning as well that um, the visual perception is, of course, we all see through our eyes, is not uh, rectangular, but it is horizontal. So we have a horizontal view through our eyes on the world. And um, the Full Dome projection room actually is quite near to our uh, natural vision of, of reality when we look through our eyes in, into the world. So through this we can gain um, um, an experience of totality or full immersion that uh, he is actually on some places um, explaining uh, on the artwork of Sergei Eisenstein. Um, as I said, he was uh, focusing on various fields of, uh, of uh, 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 art, and as well on film art. Of course, he did not know in the 40s and 50s already the full dome projection space, but what he's saying is that he sees in the film work of Eisenstein the possibility of an <coughs> intensivation of experience. The intensivation of experience is actually one of the major um, characters of the integral consciousness. So a higher frequency, you would say, and a higher intensity of experience. And he's putting it uh, in a very poetic term. He talks about the four-sided cage when he explains how we actually look at pictures. So he sees a novel rectangular picture as a cage in his way. And uh, he says that the challenge would be to actually uh, explode this cage that we have a horizontal vision of reality, which is actually taking place in the Fulham Theater. Um, and the two-dimensional uh, cinema screen is actually replaced through the curved space, <coughs> the curved space which is for him also the symbol um, for the integral consciousness itself, the curved space. Um, and at least, I mean, we're talking not just only about the visual perception, at least from a cinematographic point of view, this explosion of this four-sided page would be already a certain kind of space freedom in the Gapsosian sense but only uh, with respect to the picture. And of course, if it uh, is actually taking place in the picture, the probability is quite high that it actually takes place in the consciousness of the viewer, which is the actual challenge, uh, especially for the filmmakers who want to use this, um, this scene, this projection space, for a consciousness journey. And this is what I'm focusing a little bit about. Um, the signature, he says, the signature of the fourth dimensionality is the, the, the sphere. The sphere 
is his symbol and signature for fourth dimensionality. Um, and um, um, and actually, there is an analogy between the sphere, as uh, he sees the universe, the whole universe as a sphere, and um, the architectural um, space of a full, full dome projection, projection space. Um, and you could say that in al analogy to the fourth dimensional uh, space-time continuum or the curved space, um, the, the projection space would be, in architectural terms, such an analogy. Um, so, in some way, you could say that um, the full dome projection space is the perfect location and the perfect setting um, to actually, with the cinematographic language, get these messages uh, across. I have to use now a two-dimensional projection and have to explain it, but with cinematographic full dome language, you can actually uh, make quite beautiful uh, um, rides and explanations to get this uh, um, um, explained. Um, I was mentioning already that to have an understanding of being not only in a theater, in a, in a cinema, but being in a theater uh, allow us to connect to the tradition of theater, theater sciences, and what actually takes place in a theater. And um, I want to mention the um, German um, theater scientist, uh, Erika Fischer-Lichte, which is uh, teaching in Berlin, um, and he, she wrote uh, the aesthetics of the performative, a very beautiful work where she actually makes uh, quite fundamental uh, points on um, what is the main thing of being in a theater in comparison of uh, sitting in front of the television or whatever. And, um, well, first of all, um, it is obvious that uh, making this link always, this is what I'm trying, making this link from physics and space-time to the projection theater. And um, obviously, we are in this space-time, we are in the Einstein-Minkowski Raum, not only in the theater, but as well at this moment in this room. So, uh, being conscious, as we, if we think about the, the ceiling is done, of course, um, the space is expanding into cosmic dimensions. So we are always in this situation. <coughs> so each situation in a block universe, as a, which is also a sphere, that is the uh, cosmological uh, uh, understanding of nowadays that the cosmos is itself a sphere which is expanding, and we are in this in this uh, sphere. So every event in the space-time continuum or in this block universe is necessarily a world event. And um, um, so if you take this as a background and try to use this analogy of a block universe and transport it actually into the full dome projection room, um, uh, this can be very fruitful. So, one of the major aspects uh, of Fischer Lichter's work is that she's focusing on the co-presence of the viewers. So, a film director wanting to make a consciousness journey with the viewers, who are the spectators, who is the camera, as we learn, um, can actually go with the spectators, with the audience, into a common journey. So the co-presence of the, of the viewers and spectators open up ju just new um, possibilities to make this journey of the viewers, to have a, 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 common, a common experience, even to some extent, um, which actually infects, obviously, the others. So 
this could be a challenge um, of a filmmaker to use this space, being aware that the bodily people are there, sitting in their chairs, having, for example, diving in, being immersed into this picture, and uh, going with them through a consciousness journey to make this, what I've just explained, a very abstract way, uh, experiential. Um, I want to go not too far into this. This is from um, 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 performance art research, and there has always been in the performance art research the expanded cinema uh, a very important aspect. So not only people going to the cinema and buy the tickets and they have nothing to do with their neighbors and just watch, but being co-present and seeing the cinema as a theater and as an happening. The happening aspect was one of the major aspects uh, um, Gene Youngblood was actually pointing out when he um, uh, spoke uh, about expanded cinema. Expanded cinema, he says at one point, is um, not, first of all, um, mean computer films, video films, atomic light, or not even spheric projections so much, but rather an expansion of consciousness. Expanded cinema is at first place expanded consciousness. So, and for expanded of con expansion of consciousness, people have to be in the space. It has to happen at a certain point in space-time. And since the audience, and for example, as we are now together in space-time in this room, people and the, the, the viewers are together with their bodily presence in the theater, and uh, you can use the means of expanded cinema for this expansion of consciousness. Um, actually, in the 60s, it was quite uh, an experiential uh, uh, time, and there have been made many uh, uh, um, um, experiments with audience, with happening art, and so on. And this has actually drawn back in the last few years again. So maybe the full dome projection room can actually go back to this time in some way and uh, connect to the 60s and to the happening uh, movement where people experiment in such places, not only with the projection, but with the whole space. How to use the space, the combination out of performance with the projection. I think Mickey is working already for next year on quite an interesting project. So, um, not only the focus on the, the screen, even if it's a, a, curved, a curved screen, but also the presence of maybe performance and so on, is a quite a good environment to, to experiment with this place. So, um, the Fuldon Projection Theater is an exciting and potentially quite interesting place for an Aufhebung in the Hegel Sinn of space-time um, um, and come to a state of consciousness where you actually come to this experience of space-time freedom, which means consciousness expansion, universal in some way, consciousness expansion, um, and realizing that present, past and future are in this integral, time-free consciousness actually one. If this actually succeeds in the consciousness of the people, they would uh, come to what Gebser calls the integral consciousness and be aware that the origin, and with origin he means the alpha point of evolution, is actually there, in presence. Because space-time continuum is one, is one block in some way. And only our mental consciousness defines us as a three-dimensional body at a specific place in space-time. Could we overcome this, then we would be in a direct resonance, an online connection with origin and the future, omega.
So um, this is, of course, not a thing you can make in some way in the cinema, but what you can actually do as a filmmaker, you can, being aware and using these techniques and tools, lead the audience in a full-on theater situation to an experience um, that is not just only uh, aesthetic interesting, but also profound and spiritual. Yes, I want to end with this uh, final quotation with Sean Gebser when he says, origin is presence. Thank you.